Hey guys, welcome to lesson 7 of how to make iPhone apps with no programming experience. In the previous lesson, we learned how to add an element, specifically an image view, to the storyboard and also how to position it and how to size it with auto layout constraints. And this is the result that we got. The app is running in the simulator in portrait view. It's vertically centered and it's 50 points from the left edge. And if I go into landscape view, it's also vertically centered and it's also 50 points from the left edge. Now, I'm not particularly happy about this because while I think it's perfect in portrait view, you see there's just enough space for two cards. In landscape view, I feel like if the other card was 50 points from the right edge, there'd be too much white space in the center. So in landscape view, I actually want the card, this card in particular, to be closer to the center. I want a bigger margin from the left edge. So what can I do about that? Well, that's where size classes comes into play. So let's go back into Xcode. I'm going to stop my project here. And in the storyboard of your project, down here, you'll notice W, any, and H, any. And that stands for any width and any height. If you click that, you're going to get this little pop up where you can change your size class that you're looking at. See? And there's a little description about what that size class is. What this allows you to do is to add elements and constraints to only a specific size class. Now, by default, we are in the any width and any height size class. So any elements that we add onto the storyboard or constraints that we add to the storyboard in this size class applies to any screen size. So whether that's landscape, portrait, iPad, iPad portrait, iPad landscape, it's going to use the same set of elements and the same set of rules to position and to size them. Now I mentioned that in portrait, I wanted this constraint right here, see the 50 point constraint here. I thought this was perfect in the iPhone portrait, but in landscape, I wanted this to be a greater margin. So what I can do instead is right now I'm in the any with any height size class. I'm going to delete this constraint. So let's go ahead. You can delete it from here on the document outline. And instead I'm going to change size classes to go into the iPhone portrait. So let's drag this around and see what we've got here. This is for all iPhones in portrait. That sounds exactly like what I need. So I'm going to choose that. And then I'm going to add that 50 point constraint margin here. And then after that, I'm going to change the size class to the landscape one. And I'm going to add another constraint that is specific for landscape orientations and make that margin bigger. So the one I'm adding right now is to the compact width regular height size class, which is only for portrait. So I'm going to click image view. I'm going to go into here. Uh, this is the pin menu. I'm going to uncheck constrain mar to margins. I'm going to highlight that left margin. I'm going to say 50. 50 is good. Make sure you click out of it, press tab. Uh, and then you can see that it's 50 with this enabled add one constraint. So there we go. Now, if I switch size classes to this one for all compact height layouts, iPhones and landscape. So this is what I need for landscape. You can see that it's, it says it's missing a horizontal constraint. And then you can see the constraint that we just added is grayed out here in the document outline, because this constraint we only added to the portrait size class for iPhones. So now I'm going to add another one and click the image view. I'm going to uncheck constraint to margins, enable that left margin. And this time I'm going to say, I'm going to say a hundred and let's add that constraint. And as you can see, there's a little, uh, warning there that what I'm seeing here is not reflective of what the rules are. So I'm going to highlight my image view, click resolve, uh, click resolve auto layout issues, which is this little icon here and update frames for all views in my view controller. So now you can see that in landscape view, um, it's going to have a hundred point margin from the left edge. So now let's go back to 
any width and any height. Now you can see that um, both of these are disabled or grayed out because I added those specifically to uh, the portrait size class and this one to the uh, landscape size class. But let's run it now in our simulator to see what we get. Okay, so this is portrait right here, which is that 50 point margin from the left. Now if I go into landscape, you can see that there's a greater margin, it's 100. Now let me change back to portrait. Do you see that? And landscape. It's still actually a little too far away, so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try 150 instead. So I'm gonna highlight this one, and I'm gonna go here and change that 100 to 150. And now while we're here, take a look at this. Um, down here for my constraint, I can see where it is installed. So there's a check mark next to any width and compact height. And this is the landscape size class. If I wanted to install this constraint also to uh, the size class which I'm currently looking at, which is any width and any height, I can simply also check that and then now you can see that it is enabled in this any width and any height size class and I can uncheck it like that okay so let me run it again and there you go so that looks a bit better that's landscape and that's portrait